Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host Nick, and today, since the last tips video was so popular with everyone, I thought it made sense to continue the series. As last time, remember to share your own favourite tips in the comments below, but here are another 11 FL Studio 11 tips. First, I have to mention an addition to my last tips list. I mentioned that you can trial samples in the selected channel by holding shift and then pressing the up or down keys, but I failed to mention that you can also do this by middle clicking on the sample in the browser, which might save some scrolling. Did you know that you can save a preset for any VST plugin that will load automatically whenever you load the plugin? To do this, all you need to do is first of all make your preset, and then go to save it as normal, but don't save it in the normal place. Starting from the FL Studio folder, you need to go to Data, System, then Default. And here you need to name it exactly after the VST plugin. In this case, the VST is just called Massive. And then if I close Massive, and reopen it again, you'll see the preset is loaded. So that's pretty handy, but make sure that you get the name of the VST plugin exactly right. By default, FL Studio usually names the VST in the channels list directly after the VST plugin, but if in doubt, browse directly to your VST plugins folder and check the name of the plugin in there. Want a quick way to access the playlist or piano roll options while working? While in the playlist or piano roll, hold down the middle click and then press the left or right mouse button to bring up the menu next to your mouse. This also comes with an easy way to switch tools without learning all the keyboard shortcuts, but importantly has all of the options that you'd usually expect to find up in the top left hand corner. I've taught this one in a previous tutorial, but it was never in a proper tips list, and it's one of the most useful mixer shortcuts I know. If you've got lots of busing and want an entire bus and everything going to it to be soloed all at once, all you need to do is alt and right click on the solo for the bus, then every track which is rooted to it will also be soloed. I often see people complaining that the knobs are not precise enough. Just hold control when tweaking it and you'll be able to move it much more finely. Here's one that I didn't know until recently. I've always jumped into the piano roll to select MIDI and copy it to another channel. However, you can also do it in a much faster way just by selecting the channel in the channels list, pressing control C and then selecting the destination channel and pressing control V. It's very simple but easy to miss. Six. Are you using automation on a knob or control in one section of the playlist but not at the start of the track, causing the control to be in the wrong position when you relocate to the start of the track? This usually doesn't happen, but if you've caused this to happen by accident, this is really easy to fix. Just set the control to where you want it to default to, then right click on it and select initiate with this position. You can also use this in conjunction with the next tip for third party plugins. Want to automate a parameter in a third party plugin, but of course you can't just right click on it like with FL native plugins. Well that's fine, just tweak the control, then head to tools, last tweaked, and then you have the usual set of right click options to play with. Middle click or shift click on any name label and you'll bring up the rename dialog, which is a bit faster than the right click options route. And of course in the mixer, if you select the track, you can also press F2 to do the same thing. But middle click and shift click work almost anywhere. The macros menu under tools is pretty easy to overlook, but contains some very useful options. My favourites are the select unused channels and purge unused audio clips macros. These are useful to clean up your project's channels list, for instance if you've got a lot of audio clips you've trialled out but haven't actually used in the playlist, then you can easily purge these from the project, and the same goes for instrument channels. Following on from the last tip, if you select multiple channels then press alt and delete, you're able to delete all of them in one fell swoop. This is especially useful if used in conjunction with the select unused channels macro. And finally tip 11. Autosave. ImageLine introduced this with FL Studio 10 and it saved my life many times. Under file settings, you can set the autosave period, which I set to every five minutes and risky operations. This means that if I do anything which could potentially overload things and crash FL, I'm safe in the knowledge that FL has made a backup for me just in case things do go wrong and I forgot to save my work. Where do you go to find your backups though? Head to the ImageLine FL Studio folder, then it's under data, backups, and everything is very helpfully labelled so you can easily find the latest project or any previous version of it. But that is it for this episode of Production Bytes, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and if you're in the market for new samples or just want to support the show, then we've just released our second sample pack, Modern Breaks, which contains 2GB of newly recorded drum breaks, and there's a link on screen now and down in the description to check it out. Otherwise though, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time on Production Bytes.